So we want to give you a moment because this next story deals with very mature themes. If you have any kids in the room, you may want to have them leave now or potentially change the channel. The story surrounds the controversy surrounding the chancellor at the University of Wisconsin La Crosse who has been fired. The school has not publicly explained the reason that they removed the 63-year-old from his leadership role, uh, from his leadership role, I should say. But Joe Gao has told several news outlets that he believes he's being punished for pornographic videos that he and his wife made together and published on the internet. He also suggested that their free speech rights are being violated. Gao telling the New York Times that the couple had made such videos for years and had recently decided to release them more widely on porn websites. But the couple said they never mentioned the university or their jobs. Joe Gao is joining us now. Um, sir, thank you so much for being with us. Um, can you tell us how do you think the university found out about this and why do you think it's not okay that they fired you over it? Well, thank you for having me on and telling our story. We really appreciate that, my wife and I. And, you know, I should say that there are more than just videos. We have two books that we've written about our experiences. So this is not, um, you know, kind of a sensationalistic project. It is something that we're really serious about. And um, we have had those books out uh, for a number of years. Uh, we wrote them under different names, pen names, because we didn't want to draw any attention to the university or to my role there. And then um, recently we decided to put some of the videos uh, onto some sites that really you'd have to go looking for them uh, for adult material to, to find them. And I guess somebody um, saw that and recognized me and told the Board of Regents. And then they asked uh, through their attorneys and um, uh, HR people, are those your videos? And I said, yes, that's the truth. And here's why we do what we do and we're not making any money from it and we're actually spending a lot of money for these projects and uh, I thought that would be kind of the end of it and then the regents had a meeting and they informed me after the meeting that I was no longer chancellor and I was given no due process they never said what policy I violated and also there was um, no hearing where I could actually do as I'm doing with you now talk about uh, the issues and I think really at the end of the day, it's a question of our material is covered by the First Amendment. It's nothing illegal and we're not inciting anybody to violence or anything like that. Um, so I, I think it says something about how the Board of Regents says they want freedom of expression and uh, free speech. But at the end of the day, they, they're not uh, going to let me do that. Sir, on, on the question of free speech, though, there was a 2004 decision by the Supreme Court that stipulated that uh, an officer's First Amendment rights, a public officer's First Amendment rights, stopped after issues of public concern. In other words, you as a public employee have the right to speak on issues that are of concerns to the, the public, uh, to folks on your campus, to folks elsewhere. But a pornographic video, according to the Supreme Court, does not fall into that category. It's also possible that you agree to a code of conduct, right? When you decided to become chancellor, well, that case, I'm familiar with that. And I think it's important to note that was 2004. Now, that's three years before this iPhone came out. And we've come a long, long way since then. So I don't know how a court would rule on this uh, in the contemporary world. And the other thing, when I was appointed chancellor, I did sign uh, an a employment agreement, but it didn't say anything about a code of conduct or morality or anything like that. It did say, set a good example. And I think that what I'm doing with my wife is setting a good example regarding freedom of expression and free speech. Um, and look, no one's trying to take down your videos, right? You're entitled uh, to have those up as you do. You're exercising your freedom of speech there. The internet certainly was in full effect in, in 2004. Uh, whether or not they're iPhones or not, what, what does that have to do with anything? Well, I would make the case that adult consensual sexuality is a public issue. Pornography is a, certainly a public issue. Uh, there are billions of people that watch it every day uh, on the Internet. So the work that we're doing comments on that. You did, though, in the books that you published and, and some of the videos that you published, use 
a pseudonym. And, and in the books, correct me if I'm, I'm mistaken, you write about concern that if your actual name and public position came to light, there would be consequences. Further, in 2018, you uh, paid $5,000 for an adult film star to come to campus and to speak to students. There was a controversy over that. You actually wound up reimbursing the university out of your own pocket uh, because of that controversy, partly because it was student fees that you used. So you knew that this was potentially going to be an issue for you. It, it shouldn't have come as a surprise that the university decided to part ways. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up because the 2018 experience, I was ultimately coerced into paying that money and um, to making something of an apology. And I found that very unpleasant. And so I did not want to do that again. And so this time around, I said, you know, I'm not going to uh, cave in to pressure uh, from the regents and going to do the right thing. Are, are you arguing that sort of what you're doing here when it comes to pornography, that it's a that it's a public issue, like it's a public service? Is that sort of what you're saying, that this is an issue of, of public concern, it's a public service? Well, I think that we are making videos that are not violent, they're not exploitative, they're a married couple, um, it's something you don't see every day uh, well, in adult porn stars, video. Just to, be, just to be clear, right? I mean, it's not, well, it's I not was just say there, yeah, we, we, we do have videos with other performers and we do a cooking show where we talk to them about what it's like to be in the industry and I think it really shows a side of the performers that you don't see anywhere else. So, you know, I would encourage people to just, if, if you're interested in this, well, to let me, take a let look. Me stop. No, let me, I've, I've taken a look. I've looked at your books and they're pretty graphic, I will say. Um, I don't know that they exactly, and look, I mean, if that's your cup of tea, I get it. But in terms of it being, you know, a, a public concern or, the way you are describing it, I'm not so sure that it fits that description. Well, I would say that we would not be having this conversation if that what if it wasn't a public concern. So I I think this is something that is a big part of human life and something that there are a lot of taboos around and people are reluctant to talk about it. And I think the best part of this whole episode is that we are getting people to talk a little more freely. Uh, Joe, very quickly, uh, what are your future plans now that you're no longer chancellor? Well, I was set to be a, a faculty member here, and I had announced at the beginning of the year before all this controversy that this is going to be my last year as chancellor. And so I'm excited about getting back into the classroom and teaching. I taught for 18 years before I was an administrator. Um, but, you know, the, the, the university system is saying things like, well, we're going to investigate his tenure. And I really don't know what that means. That's pretty ominous. And, and I think uh, we'll have to watch that very closely.